My brothers and sisters, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We ask that the Lord will bless us that we may hear his voice clearly this day. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal all that needs your touch. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us into the Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, that we may see what must be done and gain strength to do what we have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. During the time young Samuel was ministered to the Lord under Eli, a revelation of the Lord was uncommon and vision infrequent. One day, Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So Eli said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak for, the, speak for the servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. Then, thus, all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, came to know that Samuel was an accredited prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited and waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry. Bless the man who makes the Lord his trust, who turns not to idolatry or to those who stray after falsehood. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O oh Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. He immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages so that I may preach there also. It is for this purpose that I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel and Jesus' behavior uh, is part of a pattern, and I think it's an important one that if you're really paying attention uh, to our scripture stories, you'll see this happen over and over and over again. Jesus has just worked a cure for, his, uh, for Peter's mother-in-law. All the people of the town come to him. He's curing illnesses. He's driving out demons, all these incredible things. And everyone is attracted to him. And what does he do? He gets out of there. He gets away from the crowds and he spends time in prayer with the Father. And we see that pattern over and over and over again. And I think that part of it is, at least what some scripture scholars say, is that Jesus always needed to make sure that he was in focus. That he never lost track of what his ministry was, what his calling was, what his purpose was. And that was, of course, to be the Word made flesh, to bring God's message into the world, and to be the salvation of all mankind, not the Savior of Israel, not the hero king. And so often we see where it says the crowd wanted to carry him off and make him their king. But he ran away from them and went away to pray, to be with the Father. I think that's a really a wonderful model for us when it comes to our decision making, that it's important for us to step back from whatever the situation is, look at it through the eyes of Christ, and then determine what it is that we are called to do. Not to get caught up in the excitement, not to get caught up in all the things that may give us some kind of sense of pleasure, but to recognize why we are here. What is our purpose? What is our mission? And what is our role in God's plan for salvation? If we keep those kinds of things in mind, then our decision making is always going to be right. It may not always get us what we think we want. It may not always provide us with all the things that we would like to have. But if it brings us closer to God, then we're moving closer to our goal, which is heaven. Let's stand and offer our prayers and petitions. That God will bless us, that our decision-making may always be spirit-led. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will watch over our families and our friends, all those who we love, and those who we do not love as we should, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer because of the cold, that God will protect them and that we may be instruments of his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will help us to recognize the power of his love in our life and that we may radiate that love to all we meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are most vulnerable in our society, for the unborn, for the elderly, for the mentally disabled, and all those who find themselves vulnerable, that God may bless and protect them, and that we may be their advocates. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who are sick, who seek God's healing today, and for those who care for them, and for those who have died, and those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intentions today, Charles Haas and Brad Bennett, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all blessing and healing, hear the prayers that we bring before you. We ask you, Lord, to heal us of anything that would separate us from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O Lord, may your people's oblation find favor with you, that it may restore us to holiness and obtain what we devoutly pray. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint George, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In pursuit of the kingdom, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer one another a sign of Christ's love and peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite the folks at home now to make an act of spiritual communion.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we humbly ask you, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day, everyone. Be careful out there. Stay warm.